What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. It's Anthony at Meineke Cinnamonson. We have another shop that we he introduced himself with. Hey, can you cut a set of drums for us for a smart car? I was like, yeah, no problem, dude. Um, hasn't really turned into anything else other than cutting drums for smart cars. Now it turned into cutting rotors, rear rotors on looks like a truck maybe. But I told him, don't bring me junk and I'll do it for you. Um, I'm not sure what he's charging for machining rotors. But I'll tell you, whatever it pays at today's labor rates, plus machine shop charges, which I'm a machine shop-ish, uh, we're machining rotors, um, and maybe a little bit cheaper, but I mean, however he's handling his customers is his business. So I have this on the lathe. This is my old Amco brake lathe. This thing's got to be at least 40 years old. She's a little beat up, but it works perfectly fine. I mean, you look at that surface it's putting on here. It, we purchased a new uh, silencer. I welded a brake pad to this long ago, and it does a really, really good job. And I haven't even changed the changed the bits to, to get this finish out of it. And listen to how quiet it is. So if you got singing and chattering, you're doing something wrong. And trust me, I've seen dealership technicians machining rotors that are complete garbage the way they did them. Chatter marks across the whole finish, variations of chatter marks in different stages. That is not a good quality brake job. So if you machine a rotor right, and you sand them and you wash them, you are getting a great brake job. These weren't really warped. They had variations in thickness. And what I mean is when I ran a bit here, the tooling, and then it started to show the, the old worn rotor surface in the middle, and then I stopped and then I backed it up and made an adjustment on my cut. And then you can see over here, I didn't have to do that there, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna have a variation in thickness at the top. That means it's thin here, it's thick there, it's thin here, it's thick there. And that makes your brake pads pulsate and chatter and make all kinds of noise. So when people just ask for brake pads, you're not asking for a quality brake job. You're, you're, you're asking for a band-aid on your brakes, that's for sure. Brake pads only is a band-aid. And we don't do band-aids here, and uh, only if I say that it's okay. And I really know the look at the conditions. And I can tell you here, there's variations in thickness already. You have the brake pad right in there. This is all worn, and then the edge has a lip. It's all different thicknesses all the way across. And that's what we're doing is removing the variations in thickness and run out from this rotor. Listen to how quiet that is. 40 year old, probably maybe even older, bench lathe. And we may start missing this edge here. I can hear it coming. I'm hoping we don't. So this looks like it's going to get it in one cut. This one here is possible. You know how quiet that is. Sometimes it might sink towards, towards the edge. Um, but we may be able to just squeak ourselves through. So this side's done. Perfect. I'm going to sand that. And then look, you can see the variation in thickness showing up right on the very edge there. So for me, I would roll this. But being since I'm doing it for another customer, I'm gonna take that variation and take this out. And this is what the customers say. Oh, my rotors look good. You have no idea what looks good and what looks bad. I'm sorry. Unless you're a brake expert like myself and you're using a dial indicator and measuring in, in multiple areas, you're not a brake expert. Who's getting the rotors cut? It's this new shop we picked up. I mean, this is all I'm getting out of them and I'm not charging a whole lot. I was hoping one day that we, we would get some real work out of them. But look at the 180 degree very probably not quite 180 degrees right it's pretty close but it's it. pretty close to 180 degrees variation in thickness and when you pad slap this your brake pads trying to track here and track there and track here and track there that's why i don't do pad slaps unless i say that i feel that that rotor is good enough and even my eyes i'm getting older right and trust me i don't let weak things slide in our environment for sure yeah, the, the only time you ever pad slap do is rears rears because they don't usually have the, the lateral run out or um, they're not putting up to the same abuse. Correct. Well. You usually don't have the, 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 the run out in the rotor that front ones take on today. So I'm going to make one more pass here to satisfy this guy. I use a scotch brake pad for this side or um, a cookie pad. And I wash it in water and then the rest is up to the technician doing the job. Thanks for watching.